many of us, especially here uh, in California, have heard of Ansel Adams, but have you also heard of Edward Weston? Welcome to Life and Style. I'm Lori Delisle, and uh, today we are here at the Cantor Museum on the beautiful Stanford University campus. It's a, a winter day here in California with my uh, umbrella. Um, this museum is a amazing museum here uh, on the West Coast. Uh, started by the Stanford family um, and uh, on behest of um, uh, Leland Stanford Jr. who was a passionate, passionate pursuer of art and antiquities. And so when he died at a very young age, his mother um, made this museum in his honor and collected art from all around the world. And um, we now have this beautiful museum here to visit in, in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. And, um, and I have been to this museum many times and have yet seen all of it. Um, it is a free museum for you to visit. And so I highly recommend it. Today, we are going to be visiting one exhibit and it is the South by Southwest exhibit. Um, featuring artwork that was recently gifted to the museum. Um, photography by Ansel Adams and Edward Weston. And so um, these two artists, um, photographers were friends, um, became very good friends in the late 1920s um, and um, then became friends for the rest of their lives when uh, Edward Weston died in, I think, about 1958. And um, you can see um, how they pursued their art um, in similar ways. Um, <clears throat> and when we go inside and we start to look around, you'll see how um, their art is similar and different, and so we'll be looking at that. Um, they were pioneers of um, Western style of photography, which we'll be looking at, which is very clear and sharp um, photography, whereas before that, um, everything was very sort of blur, um, not blur, but kind of fuzzy and romanticized. And um, they pushed for this Western style photography very clear and sharp and um, focused on, uh, well focused and um, focused on um, contrasts and and lighting and seeing all the textures and the uh, textures and contrasts in the photo so let's go inside and see these two uh, men's work We can start by comparing two portraits taken by the two photographers of each other. The first here is of Edward Weston taken by Ansel Adams with this magnificent tree in the background. Adams really focused on the nature of photography. He was a master of light and contrast and the photos really focused on the tree rather than of Edward Weston. And then the second one is of Ansel Adams taken by Weston, and you see the focus on the line, these abstract, not really abstract lines, but geometric lines, and then you see Adams, this, you can tell must have been quite a character with this uh, murky look on his face, and um, whereas uh, Adams focused on the nature, um, Weston was more focused on zooming in on form and um, and really focusing in on form. The two, um, these are now pictures of, by both artists in Oceano Dunes in California. And the center ones are by Weston and the ones on the sides are by 
atoms and you can see here that Adams focused more on the nature and these grand portraits whereas Weston focused more in on the textures. Um, we move on to some portraits here by Weston. This is of Diego Rivera, one of his good friends and of his wife and you see here that he focuses very much on details and um, he really is playing with the contrast and the light. And we move on here uh, to another of his, and he really is looking at line. He's focusing on line and texture um, in his work. These are both Western artists, and the unique thing about these artists is that um, they weren't going to Europe to hone their craft and explore. They wanted to focus on where they lived and um, the area that they loved, which is the West. Um, this is in Taos, and this is now an uh, by Ansel Adams. And this is where Adams really decided to focus his career on photography. He was really, up until before this point, wanting to be a concert pianist. But this is where he solidified his love for photography. And um, um, these uh, photographers were using the, both of them were using the, this is in the 1920s, 1927, I think, um, those uh, cameras we see in the black and white movies with the big stand and the cape over their back. And um, they were, seeing what they saw on the plate in those cameras is what they printed their um, photos from. And the amazing detail that Adams got from this, from his negatives on these prints, and these are prints that you see here in the museum, um, are actual prints. These are not copies. And so when you look at these up close, they are absolutely spectacular. And Adams um, was the one that um, really, he was a pioneer in the printmaking process and being able to get the light and the high contrast in these. Now we go back to, um, these were some of my favorite pictures by um, Weston here in this collection. And these are um, um, little toys. And it was a little collection of these um, married couples. And it was a little commentary he had about marriage. So I um, had the honor of touring this exhibit with my local art docent group. And so I thought I would let you get a little peek into the tour that I got. So let's listen in. history of photography. So this is right where a photographer named Uncle Sullivan stood in 1873 and took a picture of this canyon. So it's kind of an homage to that, but you don't even need to know that. You just look at this and realize the scale and the scope that, that he's telling us about. You know, it's amazing. Back to Ghost Ranch or somewhere near that. 
um, when he had been shooting all morning and hadn't really got a great picture. And this is what Adam says exactly. I should just play the video. He goes, so I was driving down the highway, so the highway would be here. And he goes, and I looked over and I said, that could be a picture. And he pulled off immediately and he said, get out the equipment, get out the equipment. So they get out the tripod, the big camera, and they're trying to get the picture and he can't find his light meter. He just can't find it and he's married to the zone. But he's also a genius. He said, luckily, this is the part that kills me, luckily I knew the lumens of the moon at this time of day. <laughs> that is it's 265 lumens, so he took that as his key for the metering it. He put in the plate, and he got this thing. He took out the plate, he wanted one backup plate, he put in the plate, 10 seconds later, no more light. This is oh. the only negative he got. Wow. He wow. says he just pulled off on the road and got it. He told the cabin, and it's a very interesting if you want to look it up. Huh. Well, the book must have been long. Because <laughs> it was, uh, the whole book was about Well, maybe in the 70s it hadn't been revealed yet. I could have been. But anyway, and so. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so we only have the one negative, but he said, I think I had a picture, and then he says something like, there's a philosopher that says, the best, um, the best way to get a good result is to be a prepared mind. And if you have a prepared mind. To see it, you have to see it. You have to see it. So he, would, he would see these pictures as found objects, but also emotion. And also to be the first to admit you're capturing the light at the moment. It could change in a minute. Mm -hmm. And he printed this negative over 1,300 times mm -hmm. during his career. Because mm -hmm. um, you could order prints from Adam's record up to 75, and you cut it off. And mm -hmm. He died in the I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, luckily, the, um, the first, luckily, the negative had enough on it to work with. But this is an early this picture of it. Yeah. Um, this, is an early, this is an early print. Wow. Oh my gosh. Now you say, what happened? Wow. Well, is that his picture? He took that too. This is the same, negative. Same, same. This is the same, same negative. Same this is how it looks. So probably like in an early done. print. Yeah. And so we have the original here. But so you can look at this. Huh. So. Why you know, he, he, he works it. He knows what to do. Yeah, and, and the well, exposure and, and the emotional yeah. meaning of it, you know, darkening the sky became powerful for him. And so over time, 1,300 of these were printed. I think he considers, they asked him if it's best. He goes, well, people seem to like it a lot. He's a very humble guy. <laughs> um, for instance, th this is an example of what he says is his very first good picture. It's 1927, mm -hmm. half dome. 1927. And what happened here was he took one picture, not this one, and then he said he wanted to figure out the effect of a filter on the sky because he wanted that sky to be more impactful. So this is printed from the negative with the sky and the red filter in, in taking the picture. But he said this was the first picture he thought was a good picture. 1927, isn't that interesting? The year he met Weston. And this is where he was moving toward doing more photography than less. And, and one other thing he said, it sounds like you guys know about photography, there's, there's a technique called bracketing, where you take a picture at one f-stop and then you wrap it up and you wrap it down so you have it covered but with two different f-stops so when you get in the dark room, whatever negative has the most I hope detail, you enjoyed that little bit of information. Mm -hmm. That was a short yeah. little segment of the huge tour anyway, that we so got, powerful. but um, I wanted to share that. That's more information than you would normally get when you go visit a art museum, but she was giving us lots of information because she knew we were on a continuing education tour. After we did that tour, we went over and quickly stopped by this little exhibit because um she thought we would enjoy it and so i thought i would pop and show you some of the fun things that we saw here and um this is a K south korean artist and um he had a fascinating just vibrantly fun exhibit um and he really didn't say what specifically uh his pieces mean but you can kind of see his uh, commentary on Asian culture and um, interpret, you know, your own sort of what he might be saying about Asian culture and um, from these pieces. Um, this wall is absolutely mind boggling. It made my eyes. <laughs> I couldn't, I, ha I had such a hard time focusing on this wall. I had no idea that this was here until um, she said something. But look at these faces are so tiny. They're so teeny tiny. Um, 
you have to get up so close to the wall before you realize that it's there. It's, it's astounding. Uh, I thought it was just like a soundproofing wall when I walked in. Um, so, um, but then the, the, um, but this chandelier is so fun and all these little people on the chandelier, um, ha are in different poses, but they're supporting each other. And so you can interpret, are they supporting each other from the bottom or are they hanging, supporting each other from the top? And then the screen in the background, um, which is sort of reminiscent of lots of Asian screens. All the faces and the people, they're all different. There's men and women and they all have different body types and stuff. It's really fascinating. So what did you think? Uh, was this your first taste of uh, touring and art museum? Is it um, new to you or is this an old hat for you? I hope this encourages you to go out and view your local museums. Cantor Museum, as I said before, is free to the public. Um, and um, this exhibit is open, this particular exhibit is open through January 6th, but there are lots more exhibits um, in this museum. There's our rotating exhibits and then there are permanent installations here. There's a huge Rodan, um, um, permanent exhibit here. There's a Rodin sculpture garden starts out right behind me and there are uh, Rodin um, sculptures inside as well. Um, I was talking to one of the ladies inside so there were a thousand photographs donated to the museum and there's just a small portion inside and she thinks that there will be rotating to a, a, a new section coming soon. This was just their early work. Um, there are free tours on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays through January 6th at 1230 on Saturdays and Sundays if you would like to get a tour of the exhibit. Um, and then, of course, if you go um, and look for the Cantor online, they have other tours of the rest of the museum also available during the week that you can look up. So, go out, get a tour of your local museum come to the Cantor or check out some other local art museums, see what they have to offer. I highly recommend it. Let's go out and curate, cultivate a beautiful life and a beautiful style together. Goodbye. Love you. Oh, hi. Hi.